So guys, in this uh, episode of Research and Design Build, we're going to be going over uh, everything you need to know um, about installing uh, closet doors um, and sliders. So I know that uh, you know you got a few different options. You can do the bifold option. Um, people actually do uh, double doors going into them, um, but I really like the, uh, the bypass style because it doesn't protrude out into your room. And so you're not taking up space or uh, mandating what kind of furniture you put out in front uh, because you can still uh, gain access uh, to it. Now, the first step is door size. And so that's kind of dependent on your opening. Um, so you want at least one inch more than whatever half your dimension is. So if you got a 60 inch wide opening, uh, half would be 30. Um, and so you'd want at least a 31 inch door. Now they don't really make 31 inch doors, so 32 inches would be your sort of closest uh, regular dimension door. Um, as you get into smaller dimensions, and you, as you can see with this one, I'm about 50 inches, so I'd need a 26 inch door, ideally. Um, they didn't have any of those in stock, I was gonna have to wait for those. So I went for 28 inch doors, so that does leave me a little bit narrower than ideal um, for this one here. But uh, we'll start going through the, uh, the basics of the install. And I've got another bedroom here where we're, uh, we're part way through the install. So I'll uh, show you where we're at with that one. So as you can see, as soon as I told my wife that I was done uh, doing all the spray painting, she already started moving in. But uh, so the first thing to do is to install your track. And so you got your basic uh, door frame and, and casing here, uh, like you would for an, for an entry door. Um, or a passage door into a bedroom. And so on the top, you'll have to screw in uh, this rail. So a couple things that I had to do. Uh, one, the opening that I did, did have here uh, was not a standard opening. And so I had to go with a longer kit and then just cut it down. So really I just measured it uh, to fit, gave myself a little bit of wiggle room and uh, cut that with a uh, metal bandsaw, but if you had a metal hacksaw or chop saw or angle grinder, that would work as well. It's really thin gauge metal. Um, and then I painted it to kind of match the, uh, the trim. So this was uh, dark gray originally and painted it white just so that it would blend in a little nicer. And then I added this three quarter inch by three quarter inch piece of trim as well, um, just to sort of hide this uh, uh, track a little bit, as well as when the door sits, it's gonna sit a little bit proud. And uh, so it'll blend in a little bit better there. Um, so those are two things that I did there and then caulked and uh, uh, painted it there and sprayed. So I will do a little bit of a tutorial on uh, spraying trim and the tools that I use for that in a later video. So I've got my two doors here that I'm going to be using uh, for that second bedroom that I showed you. Now I've got these all painted and these are ready to go. Um, the only sort of change that I had to do with these uh, from getting them from, uh, from the store uh, was I cut them down a little bit. Um, just with the hardware and that sort of thing, uh, it sits a little bit lower than uh, my doors do. And so I had to cut about half an inch to three quarters of an inch off the top and bottom. Um, I did it off top and bottom just because I've got these uh, sort of accent lines. And so that just, that still maintains the symmetry top to bottom. But take a look at your door, uh, door design and see if that really matters, uh, whether you're keeping that symmetry or not. Um, and just keep that in mind when you're cutting your door down to size. Um, you also do have a limitation on how short you can go. So uh, one thing uh, that you can do is drill in from the top of the door, door down and see how far you can get your drill bit in before it breaks through if you're looking at a, a, a hollow core door like these. And uh, then that'll give you an idea of how much you can uh, cut it down by uh, without uh, completely cutting off the, uh, the bottom uh, piece of the core. 
Um, so in these ones, I think it was about two and a half inches that you had to, to kind of work with before you got into the hollow core portion of the door. And you definitely don't want to get into that, so, uh, that hollow core portion. Um, you know, it, it, you can do it. You can then take the core out and, and push it back in, um, but uh, you're looking at a lot more work in that case. Uh, your hardware store might also be able to tell you uh, with the doors that they have how much you can trim off the sides and top and bottom. Um, you have substantially less uh, that you can trim off the sides if you want to do that. Um, you know, I think the piece in here is only about three quarters of an inch wide. Um, you know, down where you put your handle, uh, there's uh, sort of a bigger plate in there, um, but uh, elsewhere on the sides, um, it's only about a one inch, maybe a three quarter inch piece of wood that kind of runs uh, up and down both sides for the structure of that. So um, with this particular kit that I have, um, it says the hardware gets installed uh, an inch and a quarter in from each side. Now you do need to, uh, typically they'll come with two different sets of wheels and uh, or hardware. And so you need to make sure that you're getting uh, you know, if they're both like this, make sure both of these go on the same door and then both of these go on the other door. Uh, don't mix and match or you'll have your doors all, uh, all crooked there. So, so we'll get uh, these installed now that we've got a matching pair, um, an inch and a quarter in from each side. And now with both these secure, we're ready to uh, hang it in place. There is room for sort of one more screw, uh, but we'll put that in place uh, once we adjust for, uh, there's a little bit of adjustment so that you can make sure that it's uh, meeting each side um, of your door jam uh, straight on. And uh, so we'll put that last screw in once we have it in place. We've got our second door here, and we're going to be doing the uh, small offset uh, hangers, but same way, uh, inch and a quarter in from both sides, and uh, then we'll go hang the door. So there you go guys, it's a pretty simple install. Uh, not something that you should be uh, uh, overly worried about uh, doing yourselves. Um, in the back where I said that there's the sort of third screw that you can do, uh, you just need to undo uh, one of those screws and sort of pivot. Uh, and that will allow you to uh, close in this gap on this side and bring the, the bottom in in this case. Uh, some of the other kits have a little knob that you can uh, kind of turn and that's what uh, adjusts the, uh, the plumb or the up and down of the door. Um, so each kit's going to be a little different in that regard, um, but they're all accomplishing the same thing. They're uh, lifting up or lowering down the door relative uh, to the hardware and, um, or relative to the rail. And then that allows you to make sure that you've got a nice uh, straight fit here. Um, with the, uh, the edge of your opening or your casing. The final step would be to install uh, this piece here, which uh, separates the doors and uh, keeps them uh, plumb up and down and not, uh, you know, in or, or out uh, sort of thing. And allows, you know, if someone to push on the doors, they're not just gonna push right in and, and fall off their tracks. Um, these I find, uh, you know, this one's not the prettiest by any means. Um, it's not going to blend in very well. Um, some of the other ones uh, are made out of some nylon. 
uh, very flimsy and um, I know my kids uh, uh, broken some in her bedroom before. Uh, so I've actually got one that I 3D printed that uh, is a lot sturdier. Uh, it's white so it blends in and uh, I'll have a video uh, showing some of the 3D printed parts that I've done around the house. But this is definitely one of them. Now this you'll have to put down once you have finished flooring. Um, so this would go screw through the carpet um, or into the tile or into the hardwood or, or whatever you else uh, you know, flooring option you choose. So um, I won't show you this in this video, but basically it just goes at the bottom of the door and then you've got the two tracks, uh, one for one door and one for the other. And that's why you need uh, the door to be wider than the overall, uh, that wider than half of the opening. Uh, and that's so that you have a little bit of overlap. One, so you can't look straight into the closet, um, but two, so that uh, at all times the door will be engaged uh, with, uh, with this guy that's sitting right in the middle. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a like. Uh, that small click from, uh, from you guys makes a huge difference uh, to me and the channel as far as how much uh, that the, the video gets uh, shown to other potential uh, viewers and uh, gives the opportunity to the channel and, uh, to, to grow uh, through some higher viewership. So uh, if you do that for me, that'd be much appreciated. If you are going through a rebuild or a project uh, yourself, uh, please check out some of the other videos. I got quite a few videos up now and more coming on the full renovation or uh, development of the basement uh, in my home here, as well as uh, other work woodworking projects and uh, some automotive content as well. So uh, please subscribe if you're into that kind of thing and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys.